Here we have a beautifully symmetric equation. Our task is not just to find a solution, but to determine all possible solutions. The primary obstacle is the variable in the exponent. The natural logarithm is the correct tool to address this. We start with the original equation. To get the variables out of the exponents, we'll take the natural logarithm of both sides. This gives us the natural log of the left side equals the natural log of the right side. The power rule of logarithms allows us to bring an exponent down as a coefficient. We can now apply this rule to both the square root of x and the square root of e. Applying the rule yields a much simpler algebraic equation. By definition, the natural logarithm of its base, e, is exactly 1. Substituting this value simplifies the left side. And this leaves us with the core simplified form of our equation. To find solutions, we'll first isolate the variable terms to reveal the equation's deeper structure. Starting from our simplified equation, our first step is to divide both sides by the square root of e to begin grouping the constants. This moves all constant terms to the left. Now, to isolate the constant, we divide both sides by the square root of x. This isolates a function of x's on the right and a pure constant on the left. Flipping the equation for clarity, we have our final analytical form. Observe the structural parallel. The form of the left side mirrors the form of the right. This strongly suggests that x equals e is a solution. Let's formally verify this by substituting e for x. Again, the natural log of e is 1. This confirms the identity, thus, x equals e is a valid solution. We found one solution, but is it the only one? To answer this definitively, we must analyze the function's behavior using calculus. Let's define the function f of x from the left side of our equation. To find the function's maximum, we need its derivative, which requires the quotient rule. We identify our u and v and find their respective derivatives. Now, we substitute these four parts into the quotient rule formula. Let's simplify this term by term. The square root of x divided by x is 1 over the square root of x, and the denominator becomes x. This gives us a simplified complex fraction. To combine the terms in the numerator, we use a common denominator of 2 times the square root of x. The numerator is now a single fraction. Finally, simplifying the complex fraction gives us the clean final form of the derivative. To find the maximum, we set the derivative equal to zero. A fraction is zero only if its numerator is zero. This simplifies our task to solving this equation. Adding the natural log of x to both sides gives us this. To solve for x, we must undo the logarithm by making each side the exponent of a base e. This is known as exponentiating both sides. Since e to the power of the natural log of x is simply x, we find our critical point. Plugging this back into our function, we find the maximum value is 2 divided by e. For two solutions to exist, the constant value from our equation must be less than this maximum. Is this inequality true? Since both sides are positive, we can square them without changing the direction of the inequality. Squaring both sides gives 1 over e is less than 4 over e squared. To clear the denominators, we can multiply both sides by e squared. This simplifies to the statement that e is less than 4. Since e is approximately 2.718, this is true. Because the line y equals 1 over the square root of e is below the function's peak, it must intersect the curve exactly twice. 
Our calculus has proven two solutions exist. Now let's visualize this result. We plot the function and the constant line on the same axis. The blue curve is our function and the red line is our constant. The graph confirms our analysis perfectly. We see the maximum at E squared and the two intersection points, one at X equals E and a second larger value around 33.5. Now let's determine the exact value of that second solution. Recall our equation. We need to find all values of x that satisfy this relationship. We already confirmed that our first solution is x equals e, approximately 2.718. For the second solution, the equation cannot be solved algebraically. This is where numerical methods become essential. We'll use the newton raphson method, which iteratively refines our estimate. We define a function g of x by moving everything to one side. We're looking for where this function equals zero. From the graph, we know the second zero is somewhere around 34. Let's use 34 as our initial guess. The newton raphson formula tells us how to improve our guess at each step. After just a few iterations, the value converges rapidly. By the fourth iteration, we have a stable result. The second solution is approximately 33.544. Let's verify by substituting back into our function. This matches our target value perfectly, confirming our solution is correct. So our complete answer is x equals e and x approximately equals 33.544. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this elegant problem, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more mathematical explorations.